Okay, I've got my piece measured, got the straight edge laid out, squared up, locked down. Let's go ahead and make this first cut, and then we'll just repeat the same process on the other boards to break them down into more manageable pieces. I had seven full sheets of plywood and now I got those broken down into 15 smaller sheets. So now we're gonna move over to the table saw and break things down further. We had 15 pieces to start. Now we have 29 pieces plus two extras over here that won't get used. So now we'll start breaking them down into final length and width. Well, I had a slight mishap on a few cuts. Let me show you what happened. These three pieces here, I mislabeled at 22 and a half inches, and they really should have been 23 and a half inches. And these are the tops and bottoms of my center cabinets. So these have to match. Being an inch too short is not gonna work. So even after double and triple checking the plans and the measurements, still managed to screw this one up. Fortunately, I had a couple of off cuts and I sacrificed one shelf that I had planned and was able to cut three new parts. So it happens. So let's get back to the build. I've got all the parts cut now. So we're gonna start on some joinery. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is cut a groove for my back panels, which are 3 16 thick. So I'm just gonna make two passes at the table saw to create this groove. And then my back panels will slide right in there. I've run all my parts through once, um, including this test piece. So next we're gonna move the fence over uh, a sixteenth of an inch and make another pass on this test piece and make sure it's gonna fit on my back panel before I run all the pieces through again. All right. Now we've got a nice fit. It slides just enough. There's room for some glue, not too snug. So I'll go ahead and make the second pass on all of our parts now. Next, we're going to cut a series of dados uh, in all of the upper cabinets. Uh, this will be for the bottom panel. I've got my dado stack installed. I've done a few test cuts and adjustments. I've got the fit that I like. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get all of these cut. I'm actually going to put the fence to the left of the blade uh, this time so that I can utilize the width of the, the table to help support these longer pieces because these are 35 inches, 35 and a half inches long. So that'll give it a little more support as I run it through the blade. Got the upper cabinets all done, so now we're gonna to move to the lower cabinet panels. Uh, these are all gonna get a toe kick, so the lower shelf is going to be four inches up from the bottom. Uh, again, the fence is to the left of the blade, so I can use the full width of the table to support these long pieces. The last piece of joinery we need to do is to cut this rabbit across the top of all of the upper and lower sides uh, for all the cabinets. I'm gonna do that with the same three quarter inch dado stack. I've got this sacrificial fence set up here, just a piece of MDF clamped to my fence. Uh, that allows me to get the blade right up next to the fence, uh, even cutting into it just a little bit without damaging 
my table saw fits. Before I do any assembly, I want to go ahead and drill all the adjustable shelf pin holes uh, in all the sides of the cabinets. I picked up this Craig jig, should make it pretty easy. Um, for the front of the cabinet, I'm going to use the included fence and reference that on the front and then reference against this scrap piece uh, at the bottom. And I'll probably start with this first hole. I don't see any reason to have a shelf lower than that. And then for the back run, I'm going to take the fence off, maybe, and then I'm going to reference against this other piece as well, and again starting in this hole. So Now that I've got the first hole drilled, I can use this referencing pin to align the jig into that spot and then the rest of these holes will be equally spaced and once I get here I'll pull this pin out move the jig up and just continue my way up I finished drilling the shelf pin holes in the sides of the center cabinets and I decided to pivot a little bit and go ahead and cut the back panels and get those three put together. I've just got a lot of parts piled up here and it'll be easier to just start putting these together to get those parts out of the way. Uh, so we'll go ahead and break down this sheet for the back panels and start putting them together. doing a quick dry assembly of this center cabinet. I found when this is flush at the top, I've got a gap here at the back panel that won't close up even if I put pressure on it. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is take all of these side panels and just trim them down just a little bit so that when they're flush at the front, this gap is closed up at the back. So the reason I'm having to trim just a tiny bit off the front of these uh, cabinet sides is when I measured for this back panel, I should have measured the width of the shelf off the front. But instead, I was thinking about the half inch uh, mounting strips that are going to go back here. So I measured a half inch off the back, which left me just a 30 second or so off. Let me zoom in and see if you can see that. You can see here, I'm off just a little bit. And this happened on every part that I cut, unfortunately. Um, so hopefully that helps you not make the same mistake I did. Okay, after that slight adjustment, things look a lot better. Uh, the gap is mostly closed up, and whatever little bits left there will close up all the way when I drive screws in from the back. I've pre-drilled for screws on each side, top and bottom, and I'm also going to use these clamping squares that I made a while back to just hold everything square while I get the screws in and let the glue set up a little bit.
There's one finished center cabinet box. I went ahead and stuck the shelves in there just to get them out of my way. Um, took me a little longer to get together this first one, um, but the rest should go pretty quickly. The three cabinets are about 24 inches deep. So for the shelf pin holes for the top cabinets, if I use the standard fence that comes with the Craig jig, that leaves my holes about an inch and a half in from the face. Uh, because these shelves are so deep, I'd like them to be in just a little bit farther. So what I've done is I've clamped a three quarter inch piece of plywood to the face, and then I've got another scrap piece here that I'll put right there, and then hold my Craig jig tight when I drill my holes. And that gets me from an inch and a half is the standard depth. This takes it closer to two and a half inches in. Even after all the clamping and using the clamping squares, uh, my cabinet is not quite square. You can see this end, this is flush here on the back panel. And the other side here is sticking out quite a bit, probably a sixteenth or so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some clamps on this back panel on the top and squeeze it square before I screw it down. Now with these clamps in place, my back panel is completely squared up to the cabinet and pulled the cabinet uh, back into square just that little bit. The lower cabinets need a toe kick in the front and I think I'm going to use my circular saw and just guide it with a square. I need to cut right along the bottom edge of this dado and then across here knock out that corner. I've got my cabinet boxes completed now, so the last step for this part of the project is going to be to cut some strips out of this uh, half inch plywood I've got here. I'll put one strip at the bottom, one strip at the top, and that will give me something to screw through into the wall when we mount them.
Okay, so we've got all of the cabinet boxes assembled now, so that's going to wrap up this phase of the project. Uh, the next step is going to be to break down this hard maple and build all the face frames and put a solid wood front edge on all the shelves. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. And be sure to get subscribed so that you don't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching.